way, and here we go. We're scheming the Raiders, and Boogs from Atlanta, and here comes Giovanni Bernard, and it's a whew, hit stick fumble, but able to pick it up. Oh, well, listen, we said that Boogs needs to protect <laughs> the ball, but scheming, you need to protect the ball as well. That Giovanni Bernard, he drafted as uh, one of his key uh, halfbacks in this game, along with Alfred Blue, going to be crucial for them how they perform throughout this game in the backfield for scheming. We're scheming from the Bay Area. They haven't lost their guys yet. Coming out here under center. Alex Smith barking out the orders, and they go right to the running game, and he picks up two. Yeah, and, and Scheman said when he was preparing for this tournament, one thing he likes to do, uh, he likes to come out in some unorthodox formations to see if he can call what he literally said, quote, uh, cheap drives, right? Doesn't really want to show his full offense at, at the gate. So you can see there he comes out in a strong pro formation. For those of you new to Madden, that just means he's got some extra tight ends on the field. He wants to run the ball here on this first drive, Scott. And, and I'm not going to ignore that we just come out in a fire camera angle for the first time ever in Madden 17. You're going to see a lot of different angles today. Second and eight to the ground, and there's Bugs once again. Giving away no quarter. Yeah, and, and when you're booked and you're playing stout run defense like that, you get yourself into these great third and long situations. Now, if you're scheming, what you need to look for here, uh, a couple uh, what we call uh, high-low reads for those of you new watching here today. High-low read is you have a, a short receiver run directly over the middle of the field, and you run a deeper route over the top of it. Gives you multiple options uh, on the passing, uh, your passing offense. So third and eight. He converts third downs at 47% coming into this one. Smith has time. Looking downfield and can't pull it in was Ed McCaffrey. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want right there. If if you're booked, you get into that third and long. Now look, fourth and long here. A lot of times these Madden players, they like to go for it in these spots. That's what you're going to see here from scheming. Every possession matters more in a game of Madden football because you have fewer possessions than what you see on Sundays. Like to go for it. They love to go for it, Gibbs. Fourth and eight. Big play already here. And drive number one of the tournament. A little bit of motion across the formation. And Smith rolling out in a nice throw past the marker as Anquan Bolden pulls it in, that out of position tight end. Yeah, Anquan Bolden is a big part of his offense, that tight end. You're going to see that tight end throughout the course of this game not only run patterns over the middle of the field, but expect at Anquan Bolden to stretch the defense vertically in the middle of the field. Consistently, you're going to see Bolden come up big in this matchup for Scheman. So first and ten, back to the running game. And he squeaks out a yard. He's got Giovanni Bernard and Alfred Blue in the backfield. And... and to start off this one, Gibbs, he's really pounding the rock with blue. Yeah, he wants to really force the run, and he knows that if he can control uh, the tempo of the game, control the, the play clock, that's going to be advantageous uh, for his offense. Keep Boogs off the field. Boogs is a passing uh, phenomenon out there for uh, this tournament. He's already chewed up about two minutes here in the first quarter. Stays in the pocket this time, and wide open is Ed McCaffrey, and he works his way to the 42. Beautiful play right there. You're going to see uh, from uh, Scheman here. He uses motion, puts Ed McCaffrey over to the right side of the field. A nice corner pattern, and you can see Boogs, user defender, not quite able to get into position to make a play. Back to the running game we go. He's in plus territory at the 39. And we talked about working the clock, protecting the ball. And he's doing a good job thus far on this first drive. Second and seven. And we talk about user defender, Scott. This defender right there, that is right where Boogs is usering. That's a player he's virtually controlling. He wants to get him into positions on the field. Pay attention where he is at all times. Got to get rid of it. He can't. And it's the first sack as Houston comes off the edge. Third and long situations. That has been what we've seen on this first drive. Boogs doing a great job defensively. Now, when you get into a third and 16 spot, what this allows you to do defensively is become a much more aggressive style of player. You want to send pressure, force your opponent to get the ball out, not have time in the pocket to let your routes develop downfield. So two minutes to go in the quarter. Ball at the 38, third and 16. 
Rolls to the left, throws back across the formation, and Ed McCaffrey's there once again. It's a first down at the 29. Yeah, that, that was beautiful play design. You can see pressure comes off this right edge over there, and then roll out to the left. There's no defender because that defender was blitzing. Then you get Ed McCaffrey wide open in that right flat. First down, scheming. And he's okay with working the clock. Nom, 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 just eating it up here. Chew it up, chew it up. In the first quarter. I formation, love it. And Giovanni Bernard gets his first toe to the game, and he picks up three. Yeah, and really curious to see as this one unfolds. Gio uh, Bernard, he already coughed it up on that first kick return, but when we were talking to uh, uh, the players and talking to Schemen over this, uh, the past couple days, he was worried about the Giovanni Bernard and Alfred Blue com uh, combo. He's going to use Bernard throughout the course of this game until he gets into the red zone, and that's when he's going to switch it up, go to Alfred Blue, more of a fall forward style running back. Well, if you just joined us, we're in the first game of the Madden 17 Challenge here in Los Angeles. And you got the number four player in the world, Boogs, trying to stop the number 13 player, Skeben. Second and seven. Beautiful. Tries to playmaker upfield, forces it in there, and McCaffrey just can't hang on. That's a tough catch to make in traffic right there with the secondary bailing down. But what I like about this is the mobility right now of Alex Smith. He's going to roll out to the right side of the pocket. Look at that user defender right there. You can in the end see the pass upfield. We call that a playmaker. That allows you to force your receiver upfield. You have complete control of them when you're out on the run like that, Scott. Well, our number two passing offense in this tournament has yet to touch the ball. 4-10 has gone by on this drive. Shotgun formation. Smith, nice little quick out, and that'll move the chains at the 18. i tell you what, I mean, scheming, just focused, determined, and you can see it on this drive right here. And talking with him, one of the things that really stood out to me, uh, he just said that he learned so much after he competed in the Madden Championship last year for Madden 16. He, he came in, the lights were hot, the cameras were on him. He wasn't fully prepared. He said he is more prepared for this than anything he's ever faced in his life. And they go to back to Giovanni Bernard, but the former Tar Hill makes it to the 15. Another run on first down. Okay, so does that kind of showing Boogs a little bit of how he's going to be playing in this game here. We're seeing a lot of runs on first down. Do we start getting some play action fakes off those runs as Boogs has to bring his safeties up to help an extra run support here? Well, the game plan has been to chew that clock in the first quarter, and Scheman has achieved it. Second and seven, perhaps the final play of the quarter, and a great defensive stop by Boogs. Well, that first quarter right here, it really comes down to a game plan and his ability to take a look at what he wanted to do. He did it to perfection. He almost had a scary moment right there with the fumble as a kickoff. But if you take a look, he, he converted on third and longs. He converted on fourth and longs. He is controlling this game right now and not letting the number two passing offense in this tournament, Books, have a shot at the Rock. Well, it's worth noting, coming into the tournament, Books is 12th out of 16 competitors and stopping the run. Hasn't had it happen yet. Third and ten to start the second quarter. Still scoreless in our first game here of the Madden Challenge. Smith rolls to the left. And he's going to get forced out of bounds at the 17. So a big fourth and nine coming up here, Gibbs. In these spots early on in a tournament like this, you take the points. Yeah. You had a beautiful drive. Uh, you just force Boogs to, for a whole quarter to sit back. Boogs wants to get the rock in his hand, man. He wants to be able to go out there and throw the ball over the field. Beautiful drive by Scheman. Doesn't come over with a touchdown, but that's a great way to start this tournament here. Worth noting, it's a bend-don't-break style from Boogs coming out of this one and forces him to a field goal. And I'm telling you, at this point, when you cannot give up touchdowns, force your opponent to kick the three, you come down here and answer Next thing you know, Boogs is back in the driver's seat. Yeah, Boogs is a guy consistent. He, he shows up at these tournaments. And you know, at the top of the broadcast, we were watching one of the features there on Boogs. The thing I love the most about what he said, uh, and he really means this, is I refuse to leave LA without the belt. He really wants the belt more than he wants the cash. It's all about the belt. It's all about the pride of him being crowned the best player in the world. Well, folks, here comes the number two passing offense in the tournament. Trailing by a field goal. 
Bunch to the left. Jonathan Stewart is off to the right of Cousins. And he goes right to the get run here. And Stewart will get to the 27. Second and one. A little read option right there from Boogs, who's in the Carolina Panthers offensive playbook. They got a page at a Cam Newton book right there. A little handoff catch scheming off guard there. But now what that does, second and one, the world is your oyster at this point. Play action deep downfield. You can throw short patterns, run the ball, do whatever you want now. Well, 418 left in the half. Boogs trailing by a field goal. Just his second play of the game. And we've already seen six minutes almost go by. Jonathan Stewart gets to the edge. That'll move the chains at the 29. And you know, scheming, not much of a blitzer. He only blitzes 46% of the time. That's 14th in the tournament. He's going to play a lot of coverage here, Gibbs. Yeah, he wants to catch his opponent uh, in this situation, Boogs, off guard with his blitz pressures. Uh, he, he's a player that is uh, methodical with how he's going to send pressure. As he said, only 47% of the time does he blitz. So he's going to try and have timely blitzes to have defensive success today. So first and 10, back in the gun is Boogs. Trying to dedicate himself to the running game. And that'll pick up four. He's not much of a runner. I mean, he, he, he basically throws the ball 73% of the time. But we've noticed when you get into these live tournaments, next thing you know, guys are running the ball a lot more. They run because it's, these games are won by controlling the clock and tempo. You need to get into a rhythm and flow of the game. And the run game is one of the best ways to do that because it's all about ball control. We're here in the opening game here of the Madden Challenge. And Books once again goes back to the run. Picks up another three. It's third and three. Third and three spot here for Books. Watch for crossing patterns over the middle of the field. Uh, this is a great spot where you're tight end. They're going to take it. You can see a quick flip of the formation here. Watch for routes that come around in that area. Uh, those are typically where you go in the third and short situations. And he'll go back to the run again. And Jonathan Stewart gets to the 41. And, and take a look at this right here. You can see for both players, you can see Boogs with seven runs right now at this point, uh, zero passes. He's really dedicating to the ground game for a guy that likes to throw the ball. That's just a great way to start for him. So first and 10. Hands it off once again to Stewart. Stewart will go absolutely nowhere. That'll bring up second and 10 the game. Yeah, and I'll tell you what this is going to do. Uh, the commitment to the ground game is going to force Scheming to bring his safeties up a little bit more in the box to help play in run support. So you're going to see him bring the safeties up. That's going to then potentially open up for maybe a play action play downfield, vertical patterns downfield uh, to try and catch the defenders who are trying to play in more run support. Uh, a deep pass downfield could be the result. Well, we're at the two-minute warning here. Two minutes to go in the half. Boogs trailing by a field goal with the ball. Look at these safeties creeping up, creeping up right there, the safeties. Cousins with time, and here comes the pressure. And a big third down coming up. Yeah, that sack gets a, to a big spot right there. You can see pressure off this right edge. We're going to get a block shed. For those of you watching at home, block shed means Defender engages with an offensive player. They then get past the defender. They win that one-on-one -on -one battle. And that's where you see that sack right there get to a third and long spot. So third and 15. 94 seconds left in the half, and you just got to throw it away. Fourth down. What do you do here, Gibbs? Fourth and 15. You've flown all the way here to Los Angeles. You go for this in this spot here. And, and part of the reason why is it's only 3 nothing. So it's not a, uh, a a situation where you might not be able to convert uh, out of this, even if you come back, even if you don't convert here. Watch for pressure off the edges here, Scott. That defender right there wants to stream and, and generate pressure against the quarterback. Fourth and 15. The biggest play in the game thus far. Gonna need to keep Stewart in the block. There he is. Cousins. Looking downfield. And that one just a bit out of the reach. And Jones threw it behind him. And it's a turnover on downs. And all of a sudden, Scheman has an opportunity to go up two scores. Let's just throw some checks everywhere, right? Check mark for stopping the pass if you're scheming from one of our keys of the game. Check mark, force the run, force Books to run the ball. He's done both here early on in this one. And Bernard gets a little bit of daylight to the 31. Two timeouts 
Left for Scheman. Boogs has all three of his. As we're coming up on a minute left in the half, and Scheman, the man from the Bay Area, is content with running that clock. And why not? Why not? Ball control here in this spot here. Right now, Boogs still has all three of his timeouts, fully anticipate him to start using his timeouts. If he gets a stop here, it gets him to a third and short. Going back to Bernard this time, it's Sean Taylor. You can see that defender right there. He brought him up in the box, helped in that run support. For Sean Taylor, the man from the U, an absolute beast in the NFL and a greatly, greatly missed player and one of the most beloved in the Madden community. That brings up a third and five. After the timeout, 50 seconds to go. A 49-yarder from here. Can't afford to take a sack. There's that motion again. He loves using motion. Smith, there's a block. She had the fumble. Said he couldn't take a sack, and that pushes them back to the 43. And now you got to go for it. Yeah, and the motion right there, he had a receiver on the right side of the field that opened up. Unfortunately, a blockhead once again came in, uh, and that's where you see the sack fumble. <laughs> Fortunately, he did recover. We're in that really weird, awkward area on the field. Uh, ball in the 43. We're going to do some math, Scott. 17 yards added to the 43. That's going to give us about a 50-yard field goal. You know, of course, we're playing draft champions. You might not be able to make that. That's why you see him going for it here on 4th yeah, and 16. We, be we believe the range is maybe 50-55 for some of these guys. 60 is just way too far. 4th and 16. Smith has all kind of room. Throws it to the end zone. And it's almost pulled in and Sean Taylor knocked it away at the last moment. There's Sean Taylor again. You're going to see uh, the rollout here. Pressure off that right edge. Delayed. Forces Alex Smith to set his feet. Eric Decker one time. But then the breakup in the end zone right there. Big stop for Boogs. Yeah, Eric Decker just couldn't pull it in. So now Boogs has an opportunity with one timeout. Worth noting that he kicked off to start the game, so he will receive the ball to start the second half. That's going to be thrown away. You're sort of in a danger area here. You want to maybe try to get a field goal, a touchdown if you get it downfield. But at some point, you want to hold it and not give it back to Scheman. Yeah, Scheman's doing a phenomenal job of defending the bunch on the right side of the field here. Uh, what he's doing is he's dropping this defender into a short flat, uh, and then he's dropping the other defender uh, into a deeper part of the field to take away some of what he's seen. Cousins across the middle, and it's another overthrow. Kirk Cousins has not looked sharp so far in this one for Boogs. No, we talked to him at the top of the broadcast. That, I mean, Kirk Cousins was the guy to pay attention to. Uh, he's the guy that makes his whole offense go here. Oh, and forward, two overthrows already in this one is Kirk Cousins for Boogs offense. So third and 10 here. If you like defense, you will love this one. If you like offense, you may be thrown up in your mouth a little. Rolling out to the left. Beautiful play. Looking downfield, and Jones had an opportunity, can't hold on, and here's fourth and ten. Beautiful, beautiful play design. You can see the rollout here. He playmakers once again. You're going to be hearing us say that time and time again, and unfortunately, the catch in traffic, he can't come down with it. For those watching at home, that playmaker, one of the great ways to run of like a, a scramble. Do you remember Mike Vick back in the day? This is, this is what you're seeing here from some of these players. Get outside the pocket. You tell that receiver, hey, cut up field, try and get open. Uh, a little scramble drill 101 right there. Yeah, he's going to take a delay of game here. No, no, I don't, I've don't. i never heard of Michael Vick. Tell me more, <laughs> Gibbs. Tell me more about You're this Michael Vick. You're telling me that you didn't <laughs> run around with Vick just all over the field making plays? Uh, yeah, it's called Virginia Tech played Clemson in a a tangerine bowl, and, and he put up about 48 points. So I remember Michael Vick very well. And he'll punt it away, and he'll be fair caught at the 16. So with two timeouts, why not? Why not throw it downfield? Not a lot to work with here, but with only 15 seconds remaining here uh, in the half, yeah, we're going to chuck the ball downfield, see if we can get into quick field goal range here, uh, get a cheap one before the end of this half. If you're Boogs, get all your defenders deep, and you're going to see that. He brings all his defenders deep. Uh, make sure he has three defenders defending the deep part of the field, not let anything get behind his defense. 
So second and ten. And I think he was across the line when he let that one go. Yeah, we're going to get a legal forward pass on that one. Uh, you know, nine seconds now to go here. We're going to see a similar situation here. You're just going to try and, and get some yards downfield. Bugs, though, really needs to focus on protecting deeper the field. But now if you're scheming, you can't take a sack in this spot here. So Nine seconds to go, and he'll just hand it off up the middle to Bernard. And that should be, nope. Why not take a timeout and take a shot? Hey, timeout, <laughs> anything can happen in this spot, right? Listen, you've had to probably just run the ball, break a couple tackles, get loose down the sideline, make a play. He's got a million people in the secondary. He'll hand it off to Bernard, and that's how the half would end. Tell you what, a defensive affair here in game number one. At Schemann with a 3-0 lead. Books has only touched the ball twice. Yeah, why not if you're scheming right? This is the this is the formula. He's really not letting Bugs get into rhythm in this one. And it all starts with his tempo, his ability to control the rock with the ground game. And he's playing stout defense, doing a great job defending that high octane passing offense from Bugs. Well, let's go over to Tyler and the guys for the halftime. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Scheming versus Bugs. You guys said a defensive battle right there, Rico. Guess what? Scheming came to play. I guess the community was right about him. Absolutely. What happens is the best way to stop Bugs' offense is to keep his offense off the field. Scheming has dominated the ball, kept Bugs off balance, and he really wasn't able to get any kind of momentum or flow going to his game. He gets the ball back in the second half, look for him to come out, airing the ball out, and put up seven. All right, let's go ahead and check in on the other match. Let's go to our man Zach Farles, who has the highlights for you. Tyler, we've got a match going on on the off-stream game. It is Ha Shugs against Beast Mode Mac. Early in this one, Shugs in those uniforms gives it to Frank Gore. He goes all the way down the field. A long touchdown run on the first play of the game. Power 0-7-0 Shugs. He gets the ball back, scores on his next drive. Two plays, 30-yard drive. Beast Mode Mac looking tough right now. He just actually intercepted Shugs. However, he then got a hit stick fumble as he approached the red zone. So we'll keep you up to date on that game, but it's 14 nothing Shugs all over Mac. All right, guys, if you're looking for any tips or tricks to up your Madden game, follow Madden Ultimate Team on Twitter at EA Sports underscore MUT. Get the latest on new packs, giveaways, rewards, and more. Also, we're going to tell you a little bit more. Some more tips and tricks that you guys can get. We're going to show you a little video right now. Take a look. My name is ERG Scheming, and my pro tip is to find a mobile linebacker and lurk the middle of the field and take away all available routes. All right. Uh, let's take a look at a little bit of the uh, more competition that's coming up today. We have some great matchups. We still have the one. I know you guys are smiling right now. We're all looking forward to it. Dubby taking on Skimbo. We still look forward to those guys. And, of course, we have some newcomers. You know, we got some young kids and, and stick work. Uh, we, and Joe Rice, you know, uh, really looking forward to them as well. Absolutely. These guys are looking to make a name for themselves, and they're on the biggest stage. And when they're in a group with Skimbo and Dubby, if you can get out of that, you automatically have street cred. All right, guys, let's go ahead and send it over to Drea, who is with Boogs right now. Drea, take it away. Thanks, Tyler. Boogs, obviously your commitment to the run game was apparent. We know you usually like to pass the ball. Why was that so important as far as your game plan in the first half? I just wanted to see what it can do against the defense he was running. Second half, he's going to see pass. Okay, well, Schumann is obviously bringing the pressure. How do you get into more of a rhythm? You said you're going to show more on the passing side in the second half. Get some quick completions, get the ball moving, get the ball out of my hands, pretty much. All right, thanks a lot. Send it back to Tyler and Rico. Thanks, Trey. Appreciate that. All right, go ahead and uh, talk about this uh, matchup right here. Uh, you know, coming into this, books, very consistent, all right? Uh, Scheman, one of the hottest players in Madden right now. You saw at the beginning of the game, it started with the turnover that Boogs left on the carpet, two for him. Do you think it's uh, he needs to shore up some of those opportunities, or is he going to fall to Scheman in round one? No, actually, I, I like where his head's at. You can see he's not rattled. He's calm, cool, collected, and again, the fourth C, consistent. Look for him to play his game, establish himself. He's going to air it out. Schema's going to have to be on his A game to stop that offense with him dictating it like that. Zach, what do you think? I think Boogs has to look better. I know he can do it. He's got the passing offense. It seems like he's ready to unleash it, so 
Let's get it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get back to the action. Second half, scheming, bugs. Scott Gibbs, take it away. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, I mean, if you're scheming right now, you know, you're feeling pretty good. You've, you've hold bug, uh, bugs to only zero points. Nil, nothing. Listen, the way that Scheme is playing defense right now is completely locking down that bunch. He's protecting the sideline of the bunch part of the field. What we're going to see Boogs do now in this second half, he's going to start stretching the field from left to right, from the, the bunch side to the weak side of the field. We'll call this out. We'll show you what this means uh, from Boogs, but I fully anticipate him to have a different mindset coming in the second half. Ball at the 20-yard line. Trailing by a field goal. Here comes Bugs controlling the Atlanta Falcons. And in the first half, only touched the ball two times. This time he's going to be able to run his full offense here and goes right to work as Jones took a big hit. But you can see Kirk Cousins just one of six. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way to start this second half, though. Right off the gate, you can see that bunch side of the field. What he's going to do, he's using the flip of the play, sending the rece uh, receivers to the left side. This defender wants to go, this receiver goes there, he goes there, gives him multiple options uh, in the passing game, uh, flooding the defense from left to right here. Bunch to the left here on first and ten. Cousins. Throws it downfield, has a man. And Jones hauls it in at the 24. Beautiful play right there. Boogs rolls out to the left side of the field. He has a vertical that's going to get behind the cover two defense. He throws a beautiful throw. Kirk Cousins delivers the strike. Huge first down here to get him into position on the 24. Minute gone by. Just outside the red zone. Boogs going to work. Can't get rid of it. Great pressure off that right edge once again here from Scheman. He's taking notes here. This defender off this right edge, that is the, the guy that's bringing pressure against Boogs right now. So second and ten. And right about that pressure gives when he's able to bring it and get home. It really rattles, and, and really, Boogs doesn't know when it's coming. I mean, he's changing up, going from coverage to a blitz pressure. And you had said earlier, 47% of the time, he's only blitzing. He's cranking that up a little bit here against this pass offense of Boogs. So third and eight. Best drive of the day thus far for Boogs. Boogs is rattled. It'll take a little delay of game here. He's a little rattled, I think. I mean, he's trying to figure out, okay, where's the pressure coming? So what ends up happening when you start blitzing those defenders off the edge, it really forces you to make sure your pass protection's in order. And what happens when you have to get your pass protection in order, you have to block your halfback, keep him in for, uh, to protect against the blitz, or you have to block your tight end. What that means is then you can't have your your running back or your tight end run routes, get open over the middle of the field. So uh, it, it's it's a cat and mouse game that you're seeing uh, with scheming and bugs here in, in this spot. Make sure your pass protection is order, uh, in order, Bugs. So third and 13 after the delay of game. Ball at the 27. Trailing by a field goal. Motion to the left is Cousins. Has plenty of time. He's got to be careful. Ball is out. It's still on the ground. And recovered somehow was Cousins at the bottom of the pile. And that's a three-point difference. That's a big spot right there. You can see the rollout. He gets the fumble, picks it up. And now Boog's going to have to settle for three here. But certainly in that spot, you, you assume the fumble might be picked up there by Scheman. But Boog's Kirk Cousins making a play for him there. It's three to three in the bottom of the third. <laughs> yeah. What it feels like in this one. Old, old baseball game here, huh? A defensive struggle. And we'll move it out to the 21, but Scheman's done a great job on defense playing some coverage, bringing the blitz when he's needed to. And now he has the ball once again with a chance to go down and retake the lead. Yeah, take a look at some of the distribution right here. Books, 50-50 right now. That's going against the grain. He typically passes 73% of the time. Right now, 50-50. So Scheman doing what we said about the keys of the game, keeping uh, 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 Boogs off balance, not comfortable right now in this matchup. Single back formation, two tight ends, goes to the running game. The ball is out. 
And how many times are we going to see the offense recover their own mistakes? I'll tell you how many times. <laughs> three for three in this one. If you remember, first play of the game, kick return, Gio Bernard, fumble. Then you saw Kirk Cousins, fumble, recovery by Boogs. And then the third time right there, another fumble recovered by the offense. So second and seven. Already 225 left in the quarter. Defensive ball game here to start the tournament. And we're glad you decided to tune in with us today. A lot more men coming up. Beautiful find. Pushed out of bounds at the 47. Beautiful play design. I, I just tell you, he, he runs these uh, uh, crossing patterns to open up what you're seeing. And right now, you can see both players hovering around that 50 yards uh, passing average in this game. Uh, but right now, scheming, going from formation to formation, doing a great job keeping Boogs off balance defensively. Look at all this motion he's using. Little handoff, halfback base. And then he'll take it to midfield. And he's going with a bit of a hurry up, a little change of pace. Yeah, he's he's showing complete control of his offense using multiple formations, multiple sets, giving Boogs multiple uh, looks to have to try and defend here, keeping him off balance. And he has Eric Decker and McCaffrey. That's a broadcaster's nightmare. <laughs> Both 87. And on second and seven, Smith is going to use his wheels, and he's going to find Decker down to the 24. Beautiful pocket presence right there. You can see he steps up in the pocket a little bit. Now we're going to scramble out, get your feet set, throw on the run, delivers a strike for the first down. Scheme it. Doing it on the ground, doing it on defense. Doesn't matter if it's McCaffrey or Decker. Both those guys have great hands. And Bernard, little stutter step. And he'll take it to the 16. He's in the red zone. Yeah, and, and as you said before, he, he's changing the pace of the flow in this game. You saw him go no huddle a, a couple possessions uh, prior to this. And, and now he went a quick snap there. So really keeping Boogs off balance by when he snaps the ball uh, uh, multiple sets uh, uh, on this drive. Second and short, ball to 16. Smith going to the air. Quick throw, and Giovanni Bernard is in the end zone. Yeah, and that one right there, you, middle of the field, completely wide open. Boogs protect the shallow part of the field there. Almost got the user interception. We talked about the user defender. Boogs controlling that defender, tried to jump on that underneath pattern, was short. And you can see, look at all the middle of the field, wide open. Boogs almost gets there. And then Gio Bernard punches it in right there. Great out of the backfield is that Gio Bernard. This one will go in the end zone. That's where Boogs will take a knee. And he finds himself for the first time today trailing by a touchdown. Very, very frustrating afternoon thus far for Boogs. I'll tell you why. And the reason it's frustrating is because you come out, open the game, and you run the ball. It, that's not your game plan. You're, you're doing something that's outside of your character, so you don't feel like you've given your best chance to win this game right now. He's going to start opening it up. But if you're Boogs right now, you're going to start thinking, the clock is starting to tick in my head. i got to try and win this game the way I play, and that's through passing the ball. So second and ten, trailing by a touchdown. He's going to need at least two scores in this game to be able to win our first of many Madden games to come today. Cousins looking, he finds Williams, and once again, not able to pull it in. It's another drop, just two of 10 for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and you saw the user defender jump down to the underneath pattern, open up the deep cross, but unfortunately can't hang on to it in traffic. So third and 10. He didn't get a great draft as far as the wide receivers go. Doesn't have a go-to guy. This time decides to go to Jones. Tries to reach for the first down. And it's going to be fourth and inches. And there's no doubt what's happening here. Oh, he's going for it. But did you see that stat? Three for 11 with Kirk Cousins. This is uncharacteristic of what we're seeing here from Boogs. He comes in as the number two ranked passing offense. And you got to give a lot of credit to Scheman for making him play this way. Do you like that? No. No, not if you're both. Fourth and inches. Clock running down here in the third. And that should be enough for the first down. Cousins got absolutely crushed. And as we, that, we look back at that quarter there, you really just kind of think all about scheming uh, his ability to control the clock once again. 
forcing Bugs into these long third down situations. And take a look at that, scheming two of two right now, and Bugs one for one on fourth down spots. So both these players converting on the most crucial down in Madden. Well, just five minutes to go in this one. Trailing by seven is Bugs, but he has the ball. And the shotgun at the 36. Looking downfield, tries to run. And just gets back to the line of scrimmage and picks up half a yard. Yeah, you know what I love about that last play right there is an adjustment we saw from Scheman earlier in the game. We saw a similar play from Boogs. He found a wide open Jones down that left sideline. This time, Scheman defends it, makes the adjustment that makes uh, the defense defend against it. Gets a stop. Quick pass to the outside. There's Kenny Steals and Stills. Just probably going to be shy of the market there. Yep, it's going to be third and one. Yeah, Boogs looking intently on right there. He, he looks a little concerned as Scheman locked in. You see all the adjustments he's making there on the controller. Quick yep. thumbs. Boogs told us yesterday that it was so important the first game to play well. He said it didn't matter if I win or lose, but I want to play well. I'm not sure he can look at this game tape later on and say that he played well. No, I think he's going to look at it and he's going to say, well, did I come out and, and play my game? And, and that's something that's really difficult for a player to swallow at the end of the day, really, is did you give it your best shot? He comes out in this first matchup running the ball. So first and ten. Quick throw to Jones, and Jones gets to the 34. So all of a sudden, Boogs get into a little bit of a rhythm. Yeah, this is a guy, though, he can get into a rhythm very quickly passing the ball. You can see he's got that bunch on the left side of the field. All those receivers can help flood the defense. We see a lot of zone defense in these tournaments. Cousins with time. All day. Throws it short. He was hit as he released it. And, you know, this is the number two passing offense in the tournament. Only his lab partner, Dubby, the Madden Bowl champ, has a higher Offensive efficiency through the air. How about seeing W later? That's going to be exciting. Yeah, W and Skimbo, one of the featured matches. It's a fumble and somehow recovers it again. Cue the Benny Hill theme. It's going to be third and 25. You can see pressure off that right edge. This time, Boogs doesn't keep the halfback in the block. We're going to play hot potato two, three times right there. And again, that's the fourth fumble in this game that the offense has recovered. So third and forever. Scott, you got to play for a third and forever. <laughs> what do you do? You just put the controller down probably, right? <laughs> Quick kick, a little, a little early punt. A little Tom Brady punt. That's why I'm not involved in the tournament. You just talk about it. Third and 25, ball in plus territory. 3.18 to go. That clock is starting to tick, tick, tick away. Throws in a... Some heavy coverage there on the back end, and here comes a fourth and 25, and you got to go. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a spot where you deep, you dive deep into your playbook and say, okay, where's my fourth and 25 play? And if you're looking through the pages and you're trying to find that uh, through your Microsoft Surface, you're flipping through, uh, where, where is it? He no, doesn't have not, one. <laughs> doesn't have not. a fourth and 25 play, so <laughs> here comes the kicker. He's going to try to the old coffin corner that you don't see in the NFL anymore. He angles it to the sideline, and it's a beautiful punt that gets out of bounds at the nine-yard line. And now it's time for those junkyard dogs to dig in. Yeah, first kick of the day right there uh, on the punt side of the ball. Uh, gets him into the behind the nine-yard line. So that's, I mean, a good punt right there for a guy that doesn't really punt very often. You know, it, on your mobile device right now, you'd be getting the upset warning. <laughs> upset warning alert. Tell Trigger, your, triggering you. are like, oh, I gotta, okay, I got to watch this game. Tell your friends to tune in. we got three minutes to go, and Skewen's got the ball in some room. It's past the 40, and he drags some defenders as Alfred Blue gets out to the 45. Biggest play of the game. Yeah, and, and the first thing that comes to my mind right here is, is uh, Boogs and talking to him before the tournament started. He said... He is all about ritual. He's all about routine. And it, what I find compelling about that at this point is he comes out in this game and he doesn't stick to the routine. He doesn't stick to uh, what he does best in terms of running, the, uh, passing the ball uh, to start the game. And it's really got him to a bad spot here late in this fourth quarter. Just shy of midfield here. First and 10 has the ball. And he's had the lion's share of the possession in this one. And this time it's a run blitz. 
and it's a committee meeting in the backfield. Yeah, that's good defense right there. He shoots through the gap there. Now, what that allows him to do in these situations now, because it forces uh, a passing spot here on second and 12, you need to get into a manageable uh, third or fourth down situation if you're scheming. So now, if you're books, you can sit back a little bit uh, and prepare for the pass. Using your timeout here with 24 seconds before the two-minute warning, you like the play by Books? I like it because he got a two-yard lapse on first down. He's trying to get the ball back before the two-minute warning. This is this is where he's making his chance. He's trying to win the game on this possession, trying to get the ball back now. Well, for the first time today, Schema goes in the shotgun, split backs, Beautiful. and it's a delay. Yeah, there's another, another timeout. Get him in that third and long spot again. Try to get the ball back here for a game time drive, third and 12. Watch for corner patterns. Watch for deep posts over the middle of the field. These are the routes that you're going to typically see from uh, an offense at this spot right here. When we see this trip set, typically Gecker kind of goes in motion, runs a vertical off this right edge down here. And then watch for Ed McCaffrey running a post over the middle of the field right there. That's where he wants to go with the ball. Third and 12. Gets rid of it and has a man. And a huge play to the 38, and that should take us to the two-minute warning. Yeah, and that's what, exactly what we saw right there. Post over the middle of the field from Ed McCaffrey. We saw the motion. We are seeing time and time again. Beautiful throw right there. Threads the needle in between three defenders. Scheming, clicking on all cylinders now with two minutes to go in this game. Can I just say I love the different camera angles? that You absolutely saw that he threaded that one in there for the conversion. And we're here at the two-minute warning. And the number 13 player in the world has the number four player, Boogs, on the ropes. Ball at the 38. Watch the safeties. They're all up in the box right there. You get burned deep real quickly on a play action fake to Bolden. Smith will hand it off to Giovanni Bernard. And Bernard will get to the 37. And Boogs, uh-oh. It's its final timeout. Yeah, notice right here, that's a run defensive play called the cover four. The reason it's cover four, new to Madden 17 this year, it's called run fits. You have specific defenders that play run first. So when you see guys go into a cover four, you know they're anticipating run. That's what we just saw from Boogs there. My question, though, is does Schemann recognize that? Does he see that? And does he go play action fake here, try to get the ball up in the seams to a Bolden, to a Gresham, in the middle of the field there off a of P fake? Play action fake well, right there. Well, do I need there. to remind you of the Super Bowl? I know you're a <laughs> Patriots fan. You got to run the ball here because three will probably win you the game. Clock in his favor. No timeouts for Boogs. And he goes back to the run. And Alfred Blue now has eight carries for 48 yards. Third and five. Third and five. And once again, Boogs going with an all-out run defense right there. You can see all those red defenders going after playing run support. What is difficult about playing the run and also having to worry about defending the pass is it gives the offense an advantage because the offense knows what they're going to do on a third and five spot. Defensively, you're one step slow. So big spot right here in this game. 90 seconds to go. Back to Blue. Blue. Doesn't get anything, and now Andrew Franks is his kicker. If you're wondering about Andrew Franks, he's a 73 gold. <laughs> and these guys don't have a lot of kick power, and it's a 50-yarder from there. What be Andrew Franks' biggest kick? You know, you played a lot of competitive Madden. What are you doing here? Fourth and five. 64 seconds to go. Uh, I'll tell you two things he's thinking here. One, take a, a, a timeout right here. As you see, he has practiced his kick, so he knows, okay, if I hit full power, I can make it. Well, here is a pressure kick, to say the least. Uh-oh. 50 yards is the distance. It's up, and it sneaks inside the uprights, and we got a 10-point game, a huge kick by Skaben. We'll take another look at this one. Here's the kick snap of the ball. Kick is up, and we're going to squeak right inside the bar. And that's how you get the job done there if you're scheming. Well executed drive. Forced Books to take all of his timeouts now. Down to possession. So Books not only needs to get a touchdown or field goal here, he needs to get the ball back with an onside kick to have a shot in this one. So we got a 10 point lead upset in the making. With 52 seconds to go, he's going to need two quick scores. And he's got no timeouts. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the probability 
is slowly squeaking itself away. Ball at the 25. Boogs needs some love. Throws it deep in the coverage. And almost picked off on the tip drill. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, what you're going to see here from Boogs. We're going to see all, uh, a lot of coverage right now uh, from Scheming. But if you're Boogs, all you need to do is get a quick deep pass downfield, get into field goal range, kick the field goal, then go for the onside to try and conserve time. 43 seconds to go. Drops Beautiful eight play. in coverage. Here comes the blitz, and he just throws it away with 37 ticks to go. That's If you wanted to summarize the game, that was sort of it. Nobody open for Boogs. Yeah, Scheming making adjustments in the outside. He's showing that he's in a cover two zone look, but he's manning the defenders up on the outside. Yeah, we're in group stage here, so he's still got plenty of games to go here for Boogs. Of course, two advance out of the group. This is a big win for Scheming. He'll looks like he's going to go one and zero in the groups, and Boogs will uh, drop to zero and one. And what's not good for for Boogs? is Ha Shugs is in the rearview mirror. He's going to play him next. Ha Shugs, one of the most experienced players, not just in this tournament here, but in the world. He was in back in Madden 2006. He was a, a Madden Challenge regional winner. So he has done it on the big stage. That's going to be a big matchup coming up next. Of course, Scheman will play Beast Mode Mac. He'll try to move to 2-0 in the groups as this score holds up. Ten-point game. Now there's 10 seconds as he gives it to Kelsey for the first time. Ball at the 42. It's not good when all of a sudden you realize, oh, you have Travis Kelsey. With 10 seconds left in the game. First time we've seen him called upon today. Perhaps he's been looking downfield. But you got to tip your cap to scheme in here. He's played great defense. You hold the number two passing offense in the tournament to three points as Donald picks up the sack and the clock will run out in this one. It's an upset to start off the tournament scheming. We told you he's one of the hottest players in Madden just coming off a big Vegas win and on the big stage here in the majors comes up with the upset victory over the number four ranked player in the country Bugs. Yeah, and if there's anyone that doesn't think it's an upset, it is scheming. I think for all of us here, I will absolutely agree with you. Uh, upset city, but scheming right now. Let's just take a, a step backwards. He didn't lose a game in the online group stage to get here. He beat guys like Mills, who's here today. He also knocked out Sirius Mo. He beat Sirius Mo there as well. He went 3-0 there. He gets his first victory here. This guy hasn't lost a game in a while. Well, I tell you what, uh, you mentioned it, a big win over Mills in the group stage, and now a big win over Boogs here to start off this tournament. Let's go to the third member of our broadcast team, Drea. Thanks, Scott Scheman. Congratulations. I'm going to call you Mr. Pressure. You brought it all game, kept Boogs off guard. Why were you so effective? Uh, I just tried to send some pressure and see, you know, what his routes was, what his route combos was. I know he's a great player, great passer, so um, I tried to control it, and I think I did a good job. Yeah, number two passing offense, you really came through with the big upset. What's your message to the Madden community? You really made a statement to start this tournament. I'm locked in, man. Uh, it's going to be tough to beat me, and if you beat me, congrats to you. All right, well, best of luck the rest of the day. Let's send it back to Tyler and Rico. All right, thanks, Dre. I appreciate that. Yeah.